you need to know the contents of each file in your project when building anything in programming. For this reason, in this video, I'm going to explain to you concisely the role of all files you have when you create an MVC web application project in ASP.NET Core. Welcome to Code the Future, this is Aden, and I help you learn C Sharp and .NET on your own. Now let's get into the video. To create our first application, we can just open Visual Studio and click on Create a new project. Next, find an MVC template for a web application and make sure that C Sharp is the language for this template, not F Sharp, for example. In the page that loads, give a name to your app, like My App. You can change the location where you want your project to be stored if you want as well. Click on Next, and here I will select the .NET version to be .NET 9, this preview version, but the final release of .NET 9 may be available by the time you watch this tutorial. Let's leave all the other settings as they are for now and just click on Create. Here we have our application. When you create a new ASP.NET Core MVC project, several key files and folders are automatically generated. Let's go through them one by one. First, we have the program.cs file. This is the entry point for the application. This first line initializes a new instance of the Web Application Builder class, which sets up the configuration, services, and the web server. Next, we add services to the dependency injection container. Here, we are adding MVC services to the container with support for both controllers and views. This allows our application to handle incoming HTTP requests and render HTML views. Then, we build the application. This line compiles the app, creating a web application instance, which we can then configure and run. Now we configure the HTTP request pipeline, which determines how requests are processed by the app. If the app is not in the development environment, we set up an exception handler to redirect users to the home slash error page when an unhandled exception occurs. Additionally, we enable HTTP strict transport security to enforce secure HTTPS connections. We continue configuring the pipeline with this app.useHttpS redirection, which ensures that HTTP requests are redirected to HTTPS, and app.useRouting enables routing, which allows the app to match incoming requests to the appropriate endpoint. Next, we have the app.useAuthorization, which is responsible for authorizing users to access secured resources. We map then static assets. This line enables serving static files such as images, CSS, and JavaScript from the www root folder. Then we configure the default route for the MVC application here. This sets up the default route pattern, which maps to the home controller and its index action method by default. The ID parameter is optional. So this is the default route that will be redirected to when we start our application. Every URL is actually assumed to have this pattern. The first part is the controller, then a method of that controller, which is actually called an action in ASP.NET Core, and the ID that is optional. Let's say a request is made to a URL called slash items slash overview. Our application will try to call an action called overview inside an items controller. And now let's go to the last line. Finally, we run the application. This line starts the web application and begins listening for HTTP requests. Now, let us now see what the other folders do as well. Just as a reminder, if you want to learn more about C Sharp before starting to build web applications, you can get my C Sharp ebook at a limited time price by using the link in the description. You will find everything you need to know about C Sharp in one place. Just take a look at it, and now let's get back to our video. The controllers folder contains the controller classes. These handle incoming HTTP requests, process user input, and interact with the model to return the appropriate view. For example, we have the home controller here that is already created. The models folder then contains classes that represent the data of the application. Here we have a sample model, errorviewmodel.cs, which is used for error handling. 
The views folder contains the eraser view files or the .cshtml files used to render HTML to the client. In this folder, you'll also find the view imports .cshtml, which contains directives that are imported into every view, such as tag helpers, and the underline view start .cshtml, which specifies common view configurations like the layout. Within the views folder, there's also a shared subfolder, which contains shared views like the layout, which is the layout page that is used as a default design for all pages, and this underline validation scripts partial .cshtml file, which contains client-side validation scripts. There's also a home folder, which contains views related to the home controller, such as the index, view page, and the privacy view page. The www.root folder is the root for the application's static files, like CSS, JavaScript, images, and other assets. Inside, you'll find subfolders like CSS for style sheets and JavaScript for JavaScript files. For example, site.css and site.js are default files included for your custom styles and scripts. Next, we have the configuration files. The appsettings.json file is the main configuration file for the application. It contains settings like connection strings and app-specific configurations, which we'll see later on. Let's take, take a look at the properties folder as well, where we have the launch settings.json file that contains settings related to how the application is launched during development. They can be modified to suit the specific requirements of the project or different development environments. And that's a quick overview of the main files and folders in an ASP.NET Core MVC web application project. If you enjoyed this video, you have to watch the next video in the series to learn how to build MVC web apps in .NET 9. Just click the video on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.